Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. Welcome to the studio. Now, what can be more daunting than when you sit down to a big sheet of white paper in which you're going to do a full painting from beginning to end? Now that can be really exciting, but it can also be really stress inducing. I know I still get that way sometimes when I'm approaching a new project and certainly for new watercolor artists, you can get that way um, when you approach those brand new pieces. So today we're going to focus a little bit on freeing ourselves from the uh, fear of the big white page uh, that's staring us down and we're going to start thinking a little bit smaller. So we're going to break it down into smaller sizes. So there's nothing, there's no rules that say you have to paint the full page, whether you buy your paper in blocks or sheets or sketchbooks or however you get it. You do not have to stick with that size for each of your paintings. You can tear it up, break it down, cut it up however you want, and also just use tape to square things off. So I'm gonna be showing you today in my sketchbook, this is my B eight by eight, so eight inch by eight inch. It's already a pretty small page. Um, watercolor book where I break it down into four smaller pieces for paintings. We're gonna walk through each of these and focus on different types of skies and a couple of different silhouettes where I'm going to encourage you at this smaller size to take risks and chances. Um, don't be afraid to experiment a little bit, but we'll also practice some of our basic skills like gradient washes, flat washes, variegated washes, as well as wet on wet technique. So this is a great way to do that on a smaller scale. So thank you so much. Before we get started, um, I just have to give a big shout out or a thank you to all of my subscribers who um, watch and come back week after week and join me for lives, my studio crew members. If you wanna know more about becoming a studio crew member, um, as a member, you get some exclusive content, additional live sessions with me, and also it helps support me as a content creator and an artist to be able to keep doing what I'm doing. And then also my super thanks contributors, those who make a super thanks contribution right on this YouTube channel for all the free content that's available um, is absolutely amazing and wonderful. And I have so much gratitude um, for all of you who keep coming back week after week. So thank you so much. Um, Feel free to leave comments if you have questions along the way, and I will get to them as quickly as I can. And I guess that's all. Let's get to painting. So let's get started. We're going to be using the wet on wet technique for our first square. And I'm going to be using just three primary colors from the Windsor Newton Cotman student grade line. I pulled out cadmium yellow light hue, cobalt blue, and purple lake, which is a magenta color that you can see here on my palette. We are going to be using the wet on wet technique to create a dramatic sunset and you want to start with your square nice and wet for this. When you're using 100% cotton paper, you might need to use a little bit more water than you think. You're looking for a nice shimmer, not puddles, not a dull sheen, but a nice shimmer on your paper. And if you need to, you can lift your paper from one side to the other and look at it at an angle to see if you've achieved that effect. We're going to start with our cadmium yellow for the color. So you're going to activate that color, add a bit of water to it, just enough to kind of get a flow going, but you want it to be a pretty bright color. You're going to apply your brush strokes in an upward sweeping fashion from the most concentrated hue at the bottom, upward, letting it fade out towards the top. And we're going to be covering about one third of the square with this color. You don't want to cover the whole thing with a flat wash of yellow necessarily. You just want to do one third. And again, you want it to be graduated where it's lighter towards the top and darkest towards the bottom. Next, I'm going to mix uh, Purple Lake with some cadmium yellow to make an orange color. And I'm gonna apply that in the same fashion with the upward stroke pattern, about halfway up the yellow section.
And after I'm happy with that and how I've mixed those together, I'm going to be applying just straight purple lake or that magenta color further towards the top. So you're going to blend each of these areas into each other as we add them again, continuing to use that upward um, stroke motion. And then our kind of final step will be adding the cobalt blue on the top corner and actually bringing it down towards the magenta and allowing the cobalt and magenta to mix to make a purple. So really we're working our way through our three primary colors and the color spectrum of secondary colors in between. So we have our red, then orange, magenta, purple and cobalt blue at the top, what we're not doing is mixing the blue and the yellow on the opposite ends to create a green. So almost the whole color spectrum, but not quite everything. And at this point, if you want to add in any more color from any of the other areas or lift out color to exaggerate that dramatic kind of sweeping motion, this is the time to do it while things are still wet. Once any area in this little square starts to dry, and this is true on larger pieces as well, you have to stop and let the whole thing dry completely and then kind of start over adding a second layer of color on top of the first one that you did. But while it's still wet, you can continue to add some more um, color and continue to blend the areas together. So you can see here, I'm dropping in a little bit more cobalt, a little bit more magenta to brighten and enhance those colors. I will say adding additional layers will really help enhance those colors even further if you want something really dramatic um, and really bright, very saturated later on. So just keep that in mind while you're building your sky um, and you're looking for those really bold dramatic colors, layering will be your friend. All right, let's get into square number two. We are gonna do a bright blue sky with big fluffy white clouds. So for this one, we're just going to be using our cobalt blue and I'm gonna activate a whole bunch of this paint. We are going to be doing a gradient from top to bottom. So a gradient wash where it's going to be darkest at the top and gradually get lighter towards the bottom of the square. I'm actually gonna switch out my size six brush for a larger one. When you're doing washes or gradient washes or flat washes, you do wanna use kind of the largest brush you have available for the size piece that you're doing. This will just allow you to have smoother transitions or it'll make it easier to get those smooth transitions when you have a larger brush and you can move more paint and water at one time. So we're just gonna start here at the top. You can see I just put down a large swatch of blue color at the top. And every time you see my brush go off camera, I'm just dipping it into my water and then bringing it back to the page and starting at the bottom of where I left off in grading down that color. I'm holding my uh, paper up at like a 45 degree angle. And then I've started back at the top with a feather light touch on my brush. So feather light, no more paint, no more pigment, started back at the top and just gently graded all the way down to the bottom. Now it's time to grab your tissue paper or your kitchen towel. You're going to just wrap it around your finger and start blotting out or lifting out color from the page. Some paints lift better than others and some lift better on different types of paper than others. So the um, B paper that I'm using, the cotton paper and this kitchen towel with the cotton papes, pa the cotton Cotman paints lift pretty well. Um, so I can make some really big fluffy clouds um, in order to get this lovely sky. Now I am going to be coming back to each of these squares after they've dried to add in some other kind of detail and I'll, I'll make it different for each one of them just to add something in the foreground for each of these skies. But we're gonna move on to our third square and in this third square we're going to be doing a sunrise now what's the difference between a sunrise and a sunset well sometimes there's not a lot of difference but i tend to find that sunrises 
are more gentle. They're more um, subtle. They're more pastel in color where sunsets can be super dramatic. Um, So for our sunrise, we're going to be doing something called a variegated wash. And a variegated wash, kind of similar to what we did in the first one, is when our colors blend one into another. But we're going to go right from the bottom of the page all the way to the top. And we're going to blend each of these colors very subtly into each other. So you can see I'm watering down the color, creating a very um, light valued color to begin with before I mix it on the page. Now I know once I put the blue and the magenta near each other, it will mix a little bit to make some purple and the same with the yellow and the red, but I'm not forcing it to be a very dramatic color change. This is gonna be very soft and very subtle um, for this sunrise. There you go, you can see it's it's not much. It doesn't take a lot to create um, a beautiful soft wash. That can be the perfect setting or backdrop for many of your landscapes. All right, on to square number four. This one is gonna be the most dramatic and I'm going to start with, and we're gonna kind of simulate um, a sky before after a storm with some darker, heavier clouds, but also with some bright light reflections off the clouds. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some orange and I'm gonna do that with my cadmium yellow and my magenta. And I'm gonna create kind of two colors. We have that more reddish salmon color orange and I have a much more yellowy orange. And then for my blue, I'm gonna create a bit of a purple for that color. So these are the three main colors that are gonna be in my sky. So super dramatic, um, super bright and going to be very fun and interesting to paint where painting small can be a lot of fun because you can take a lot of risks. You can do things that you're not sure if they're going to work out, but is it okay if we mess up in this one little square on this whole page? Yes. I think the answer is yes. As long as you learn something and you've tried something out of your comfort zone, that's where you're really going to let the magic happen and you're going to learn and grow the most. So I'm going to start again with a little bit of wet on wet here. And you can see I also made a gray. So mixing all three of my primary colors together, I got a gray as my fourth color that I'll use towards the very end. So wetting the whole page, or the whole square again for wet on wet, I'm gonna pick up some blue and just start with the top corner um, being blue. I'm not having it go all the way across just yet. I'm just giving that top corner blue and letting it uh, blend out. And now I'm gonna drop in some clouds. So this is gonna be the base of my clouds. We're gonna put darker, deeper colors on top of this, but this is where the sunlight is going to be. Um, This is the layer where we're going to simulate sunlight shining on these clouds. My next step is going to be dropping a darker orange color into the center of the cloud. So I already have the yellow laid down and now let's drop in some darker reddish orange color as the center of the clouds. I still want that yellow to show on the exterior, the outline of the clouds as, and translate as um, reflected light from the sun coming from somewhere. And this is where you can really start to play. Um, I'm also going to add some darker shadows to my clouds, but first we're gonna get into the sky um, in the in-between section. So I'm gonna start adding this purple around and I'm dropping it in around the clouds. Everything is wet on wet, so it's gonna blend a little bit, uh, but I do want to avoid putting it right on top of the clouds. I, I do want them to kind of stand on their own. And this is where things will start to look a little messy and you're not really sure if this is going to come out. Just keep going, keep going until the end. So I'm gonna fill in this whole area with all of these purples and grays kind of bopping back and forth between the two and leaving some white area you can see even at the top um, where the blue is showing through just a little bit. All right, time to add, now that our cloud areas have dried a little bit, I'm gonna add an even darker color 
um, because I really want to play up the drama of these. Lots of reflected light, lots of reflected light bouncing around up there in the clouds. I'm going to pull out some more purple and magenta and I'm going to put that right on that top layer. Now yellow and purple when mixed together create brown or create mud so you have to be careful but I do want the top of that cloud to be a little bit heavier and darker so light is reflecting from the bottom and shining up um, and then the tops of the clouds are a little bit darker and I'm just going to take a damp brush and blend them out with a feather light touch so my brush doesn't have any additional water in it any additional paint in it when I blend them out um, just a feather light touch and now I'm gonna let that whole section dry and move back to we're gonna move back to our first square so in the first square, now that we've moved back to it, I'm gonna make a gray. Now I said earlier that I might introduce a black to um, the palette, but I'm just gonna stick with these three primary colors. It would be really difficult with these student grade paints and these particular colors I picked out to get a black, but I can definitely get a darker gray. So that's what I'm gonna make here. I'm gonna go from making some purple, add a little yellow to it to create um, a dark gray color. And that's what I'm going to use for some silhouettes and other details I'm going to add to each of these um, squares. So go ahead and give it a try mixing a dark gray from your three primary colors. What I usually do is I start by making purple. I make I use my blue and my magenta to make purple and then I gently and slowly add little bits of yellow to it. And if it gets too brownish, I go back and add some more blue. All right, I'm just gonna do a very subtle little mountain top um, here. And I think I'll just add a little bit of texture. And I'm doing it in this dark gray color, so it's just a silhouette. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. But if you notice, the minute I put a darker color up against that lighter yellow color, the yellow starts to look like it is glowing. So that's the juxtaposition of contrast. So a darker color next to a lighter color, the lighter color will immediately start to look lighter than it is. I'm gonna add some little texture, kind of like a little dead forest up on top of this ridge, or maybe even just some straw or grass um, in the fall, but not thinking too much about it, just creating a little bit of texture on top of a landscape and just let it be. And now we have a beautiful sunset over top and you can add in some other details like little birds or if you wanted to go in and add some clouds with your grayish purple um, color, that would work too. All right, so what are we gonna do for our other um, additions to our other boxes. Let's start with the sunrise one. I think I'm going to put in here um, some grasses. So we're going to go kind of smaller. The other one was like a hill from far away or a little mountain top with some trees. This we're going to get down in the grass and be as if we're looking up at the sunrise through these grasses. So I'm going to make um, a greenish gray. I'm not going to make it just completely silhouette. It's going to have some color to it. So a greenish gray, desaturated green color that is going to go across the whole bottom. And then I'll probably add some kind of silhouette of a flower too. Most likely I'll go with, I really like to add in the dandelion fluff um, flowers as silhouettes. So they're not really flowers, they're more weeds, but they're still pretty um, magical and whimsical and I like to add them as silhouettes into these pieces. So for the dandelion fluff silhouette, just a little blob in the center, a stem, a whole bunch of dots around that with the very tip of my brush and then just connecting some of those dots to the center with very thin lines uh, is all you need. And I could have definitely gotten out a rigger or a liner brush for this or some other de very detail oriented brush, but I'm just doing it with the tip of my size six and calling it a day. 
Again, we're playing in our sketchbook. We're trying out new designs and ideas. We're starting small so we can experiment and not feel bad about it. Um, so it doesn't have to be complicated as you think through and plan out new ideas. So there we go. We have two little dandelions in a little tuft of grass at sunrise. Now, what are we going to do for these blue, this blue sky clouds? Well, I'm going to go back to my gray and you could do, um, practice like, um, a landscape or not a landscape, a cityscape. So cityscape, let's put in some buildings, some angles, um, of a skyline. Again, these are in silhouette. You don't have to have any details, just some taller and shorter rectangular shapes. You can add in some pointy or conical shapes as spires or other things or antennas sticking up, but you don't have to get too bogged down in the details. Go and look at um, a skyline online, a silhouetted skyline of many different cities, and just notice the shapes. Don't notice the specific ones, like if you're looking at the Seattle skyline or the New York skyline. Don't worry about the specifics of the buildings, like I'm looking at the Space Needle or I'm looking at this particular building. Um, just notice how things undulate up and down. Um, and this, because it's during the day, and it's very bright out, it's going to be relatively all one color. And I'm going to add just, and there's not going to be any lights on in any of the buildings, but I'm going to add on a few sides a little bit darker color just to show that the angles of the buildings change um, direction and that there's a few shadows as well as flat or highlighted areas. All right, getting into our very last square here. I'm going to make up some more of that gray for our silhouette. And I think I'm going to just put in some pine trees. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to frame some pine trees around both sides of the square. And again, when we put something that's darker and create contrast, um, it's going to help sell the glowing or the brightness of your lightest color. So just dabbing in some pines here. I'll do a couple of clusters on this one side, and then I'll probably jump to the other side and we'll throw in a couple more over here. You do not have to do this exactly like me. You can add in a whole bunch or even just one or two um, in any way. Um, or try something new as well. You know, you can experiment with all kinds of silhouettes and shapes in your um, experimental squares here. I think I'm going to add in some trees that are a little bit further in the distance. I'm going to make them a little bit lighter in color. So I'm going to lighten the um, value of them to make them look like they're further in the distance, that they're closer to the light source that's coming up over the ridge or setting down over the ridge um, and they get shorter and shorter as they go away from me. So we have this nice line of trees going off into the distance. All right, and after I finish that up, it's time to take off the tape the best part. Now, B paper doesn't always play nice with tape. It does have a, um, a somewhat sensitive surface, so I often have to heat up my tape, especially because I often use um, a harsher tape, but I just use my heat gun to heat it up and peel it off and it'll come right off. So here we are with our final piece, our four squares of different techniques for skies, doing a little experimenting. I highly encourage you to keep it small, keep it simple, and just get in there and paint. So thank you so much. I'm Shana Searcy. It's always a pleasure to paint with you. Don't forget to check out the description of this video for links to my studio crew, social media, as well as supplies that I use on a regular basis and for this video. And thank you so much to my super thanks contributors. You are the best. I can't do what I do without you and your support. Happy painting, y'all.